Hello! I am videoing from my kitchen today. Um, I'm actually going to make Scottish tablet. So before I start filming, uh, I have to explain that I'm in my kitchen, which is in my back garden, and I don't control the sun. I don't. The sun is there, it goes behind clouds, I, so it's going to get brighter, it's going to get darker. I can't control it, I'm really sorry. It has to be here, because my cooker is there, and I need that. So today I'm making Scottish tablet. If you are not Scottish, then you don't know what that is. Um, or if you don't know what that is, sorry. Um, it is basically a treat. It's kind of in between fudge and toffee, but it's crumbly. It's um, a traditional Scottish sweet thing. Um, so I'm going to make that today. Now, a wee disclaimer about this is that I make this from my own mind. I don't. I, I've grew up making this. My granny taught me how to make this. Uh, my mum made this with me. So I basically just do it. So um, I've written down a rough idea of what I believe uh, the measurements to be, but a lot of it you don't have to measure, um, and you'll see that in a minute. So yeah, if you're interested to see um, how I make tablet and how frustrating it is, um, then kick around. I'm not opening any boxes today, just making tablet. Okay, so my kitchen's quite small, there's not a lot of room for me to like manoeuvre cameras and stuff to show you what I'm doing, so I'm just going to basically hold it up and show you what I'm doing. So, first Scottish tablet, the ingredients are very very minimal, you're going to need a full tin of condensed milk, not to be confused with evaporated milk, evaporated milk just doesn't work. If you don't know what condensed milk is, it's basically a really thick, sugary, liquidy consistency thing, I don't really know what it is, uh, I eat it on the spoon because I'm disgusting. Uh, it is the sweetest thing, Naughty Man. Uh, yeah, that's condensed milk. I don't know what to tell you. Vanilla essence, you probably know what that is. Um, sugar, you'll see how I have not measured this sugar. I'm just holding the bag. That's because it takes the full bag. So this is one kilogram of sugar and I'll be using every granule of this. I then have butter. Now as I said I do eye this, this is how much butter I would use, it's unsalted butter and it's roughly about 110 grams. If you're an American and you don't use grams and stuff, I'll put in the description the American version of that. Um, I'll put in the description anyway all the, um, all the ingredients. And I've got about 225 milliliter of full fat milk. Again, I eyeballed it. Don't just tell you. Right, so that's everything. That's everything that you need for tablet. I'm now going to move the camera to the cooker, but I said it's very small. You may not be able to see everything, but we'll do our best. Hey, why not? We can only do our best. Okay, so pot. You need a very heavy, very big based pot. Something that's quite big because it tends to boil, and if it over boils, then you are fucked because molten sugar will overflow all over your cooker and um, yeah. So on a really 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 low heat, really 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 low heat, <laughs> uh, you would basically melt the butter and the sugar. That's it. So what we'll do, we'll put this butter first. Oh, yeah, melt the butter. So what you're aiming for, the aim of the game is to get all the uh, sugar granules dissolved because if you don't dissolve them then your tablet is going to be granulate and gross and nobody nobody likes it. Um, so yeah. Uh, this can be very very boring. Uh, I mean I say, I, say, I say can be, it fucking is very very boring. But it's, uh, it's totally worth it. So what I'll do is I will probably fast forward all of this um, once it's all going, um, but yeah, do you know what I'm going to do because I'm lazy? I'm just going to fire it all in. This is condensed milk. It's like a weird creamy thing, but if you actually eat it raw, it is genuinely like liquid sugar. Milky liquid sugar. So it, you can imagine it's glorious. 
telling you, Scottish people don't have heart disease for no reason. Now, if you were to go online and look for the um, guidelines of how to make tablet, it would tell you to do everything really, really slowly, don't stir it loads, um, do things gradually, but that's not how we play it here. What I do is I fuck it all in and hope for the best. I don't hope for the best. It always works out. It always, always works out. Basically, you can't go wrong. See, as long as you dissolve this sugar, you're absolutely fine. So as long as all these wet ingredients get melted into one big tasty puddle and then you dissolve the sugar slowly, then you're fine. So my butter's almost dissolved, so I'm going to put my milk in just now. Now it kills me that I've just used all of those dishes because I would just eyeball it. Vanilla, I would use one tablespoon of vanilla um, because it tastes nice. You can do it without, like I did it my entire childhood without and it was fine. Right, so for me there's only two lumps of butter in that, so I would say that's dissolved enough for me to put the sugar in. I did turn that up a little bit because I'm impatient, so I'm going to turn it right down now. Well, I turned it off because so I'm going to turn it right down now because I wasn't joking, bitch. This full bag of sugar has to go in there. Right. Big sugary mountain. There's a few tricks um, down the way as you're um, making tablet that you can make sure that it's not granulated and stuff. But I think realistically, it is pretty foolproof as long as you dissolve all this sugar and it's no longer granulate. So I basically stir it until it does not feel granulate any longer, which, which can take a long time. So if you're ever sitting one day and you've got a ton of sugary shit in your house and you think to yourself, well I want to eat that but not in a raw form and I have a full day to spend, then you batter and you make tablet. I'm positive there's probably a scientific way to do this with like sugar for not, for not blah, 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 blah. sugar for what? Sugar for who? Sugar thermometers. Um, but I don't have that. I just have um, no patience. A big pot and nothing to do today. And a husband who really likes tablet. Right, so there's no longer any big mounds of it anymore, but um, if, I don't know if you can see, but there's absolute separation there between the butter and the, the sugar because um, it's just not warm enough. As I say, I will fast forward a lot of this, um, so I'll probably fast forward this bit just now because um, it'll be pretty boring. Now all I'm doing here is scraping the sides with this angle of the spoon to make sure that it's getting into the corner so there's no sugar to sit in the corner. If you don't do that, you find that some sugar can sit in the corner and it'll catch, which means it'll burn. And if it catches, it can taint your full um, pot of tablet. And if it does that, it's all fucked. It just tastes like burnt sugar and it's shit. Then you need to start all over again and you've just wasted like two quid. Which isn't a lot of money, but still. You can see now that it's all the one colour of like yellow beige um, so there's no separation so it's nice and warm. Still very granular. Do not recommend touching it with your fingers because it is boiling, well it's not boiling yet but it's very very hot sugar. I have asbestos fingers, that's why I could do that. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Worst cooking channel ever. So I tried to look up the history of Scottish tablet for you to see if there was um, anything interesting to tell you. Basically in the 18th century people used to make it with cream um, and that's about it. People used to like it with their tea. And that was basically it. Um, it's good for preserving. It's basically a preserve, it's basically just preserved sugar. Um, but yeah, so that, that was it. There was no history to it. Um, I thought that it would be some intricate, cool as fuck history, but no. 
Now I just got a metal spoon there because a good way of testing to see if it's still granulate without touching it with your fingers because you're not me and you should not be touching things with, with the sugar with your bare hands. Um, I'm not touching it with that finger because you see it's all covered. But um, yeah, so a good way to do it is to get a metal spoon and just duck it in. And if you look at the back, you'll see if there's granules. Let's see if I can dip that off and show you. So you'll be able to see if there's some granules there, which you can see. I don't know if you can, but there is some. So that's just a good indication as well. There's very, very little to be fair. And that's what you want. People who make very gritty, granulated tablet have not taken the time at this first stage to dissolve it. Another very clever thing that you could do is rather than using granulated sugar, you could use caster sugar, which is the sugar they use, use in baking, which I might have some of to show you. Yeah. So this is caster sugar. It says caster sugar. So if I had used a full bag of that instead, it would have dissolved almost instantly because caster sugar is very, very thin. And the reason it's very, very thin is so that you can use it in cakes and your cakes aren't granulate and gross. Um, so that would have been a much better idea. And if I had two brain cells that up together, I would have done that. But here we are. It's really six and a half a dozen. You're cutting out five minutes of your life by using caster sugar. So I would still recommend doing it like stirring it this often, even if you had used caster sugar. So you can hear that I'm probably, I'm not getting as much scraping now. So I think that most of the granules have gone. If not all of them are gone. There's some up the sides, but we're not worried about that. Now, what I would do from this point is now if I'm can absolutely convinced that there's no sugar granules in this or very little to the point where I'm not really that worried about it because if there's a little left it's going to dissolve anyway um, in this next stage so what I would do now is I would turn the heating up and I would put it bring it to the boil again I'm almost positive there must be some sort of like sugar thermometer like better way to do this but this is how I do it There's a wee bit of burnt floating in there. That's great. So because it's been in a low heat for so long, it's already starting to boil. You can see that at the edges there. Once it hits a rolling boil, like it's just about to, turn it straight down again. Because if you don't, it'll overflow. Right there. And you see it's doubled in size and that's why you need the big pot. So I've turned it right back down again and it should stay at a bubbling, uh, it should stay like this. You have to basically bring it to the boil and then bring it back off the boil and simmer it. As I'm stirring it, there's no granules at all. Okay, so that roll and boil is basically your life now until it changes colour. So if you look it up online and stuff, I'm sure it'll probably say that you don't stir it and all that. I can't help myself, so I do stir it. Um, because I'm terrified that it sticks. If it sticks and it catches, it'll burn and it's fucked. And all of that was for nothing. So I basically just hang around the pot um, and stir it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I don't have um, any windows open or um, doors open for to prevent outside noise, so I am very, very thirsty, so I'm going to take a drink while I'm doing this. I drink soda water mostly because it tastes like TV static. So I've just realised that I could take this very boring opportunity to talk to you guys about uh, my wedding, if you're interested. If you're not, then fast forward and you'll see tablet being made. <laughs> um, if you are interested, then cool. Stick around while I talk to this camera in my kitchen. Um, so my wedding was obviously great. I loved every minute of it. I obviously married my best friend. I married um, Count Dankula, aka Mark Meekin. Um, or Mark Meekin, aka Count Dankula. 
whatever we prefer. Um, or if you're the son, um, Job, Nazi criminal. So we, we got married um, and it was great. It, the weather was brilliant. We had a bagpiper, he was great. My dad had a mohawk, he was wearing six pistol boots. Um, everything was brilliant. Um, my dress was so tight when I sat down <laughs> that I couldn't eat anything <laughs> or drink anything and it was so hot that I thought it was a good eye. Um, but that was just a meal. Most of it was just me walking around and stuff, and that was good. There was some drama and stuff at night with um, our second venue, which is undergoing complaint. Um, but yeah, it was really, really good. There was people, people came from London and America and stuff like that. It was really, really good. There was, then we went on honeymoon and we went to Italy. I have never left the country as an adult. I, I hate travelling. I have the worst travel sickness ever. I generally feel quite queasy at all moments of the day. Um, I get a lot of heartburn and indigestion and stuff so I feel quite sick a lot. So, travelling, I don't get on buses, I don't get public transport, uh, trains, no, I can't, I can barely be a passenger in someone else's car. Um, I can't get in taxis because taxi drivers are just rogue, just mental. So I drove to the airport, parked my car, got on a plane to Italy. We got to Naples and the plane was fine. Um, I only cried as it took off. <laughs> I didn't cry the full way so that was three hours of not crying. So I was very proud of myself because I was um, definitely um, under the impression I was going to cry for three hours. But I didn't. So then I got out of that car, out of that plane, sorry, and we got in a car with an Italian driver who was going at least 140 miles an hour. Um, all Italian drivers are insane. Um, they all go so fast. Um, at one point I had to ask him to slow down because I was going to be sick. And he was like, okay, that's fine. And then he cranked up the AC and it was like, it, it was very nice after that. It was a very smooth journey. So that was fine. I, and then because I did so well, poor Mark, he allowed me to chill out at the hotel and stuff. So for the next three days, I basically sat next to the pool um, and we went down to the beach and stuff and we just relaxed and there was no travelling for us and it was all good. Um, and then, by the way, I'm just continuously studying this. Like I'm just studying this as I talk to you. So then we went to Pompeii. Now when we were in Italy, it was at least 35 degrees every day. My phone does this really weird thing where you look at the temperature and it says today is 35 degrees. It feels like 39. And I'm like, how does my phone know what it feels like? Anyway, so we went to Pompeii and um, we got the train. <laughs> we, got, we got Italian public transport. Now, as I previously just mentioned, I am not a good traveller. I feel quite queasy at all times. So, I've never been on a roller coaster. I've never been on um, on any sort of rides that take you up and down. They go fast. Never, 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 never. Not my gig. But Italian trains are what I can only assume is like being on a roller coaster. They are at 300 feet off the ground. Everything's built up the way, so when you look out the window, it's a sheer drop. It's terrifying, and it goes faster than light. It's just the speed of light. It's so fast. So the even Mark was on this train like this is nuts. This is this is mental. Um, and there was um, two lovely Scottish people on on the train who were lovely. Um, one was a florist. The other man was um, I think he said he was, was he not a carpenter. He was anyway he worked with wood and stuff. Lovely couple. Um, the she was trying to talk to me to distract me and stuff and she was like keep, keep talking keep talking because it was just so nuts but the train is so small and you're on it and it's ricocheting around and it feels like it's going to come off the rails and it's so fast and you go through tunnels and it's just darkness and wind and it was tip mental so we got off there got to Pompeii seeing all the encased dead people seeing all the, the, the brothels and and women and willies on the road and all that kind of good shit. 
um, Mark seeing the belly of the dog saying he was very happy. Um, and then we had to leave because it was just so hot. We got a train home and as we were on the train home, it was a different kind of train. Similar in the sense that it's absolutely mental, but different in the sense that it had no seats. <laughs> and everyone was standing and everyone was sweaty and most people were Italian and I wanted to die. So at one point I'm leaning it against Mark, like leaning it against him and I start to pass out. So I get wheaked off the train and I just lie on the ground at the platform waiting for the next train of death to come and collect me and take me away. So getting the plane home was a lot easier because I was not on a train in Italy and I can only assume that that will be the worst mode of transport I ever get on. Um, it was just awful. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not a traveller, so I can only assume that that's normal. Um, that, that getting cars and stuff for like an hour and a half when you got off the plane is normal. Hellish nightmare, but whatever. While in Italy, um, I don't know if this is the same for every country, but there's zebra crossing on the road, like the white and white, white white and black lines across the road which indicate you can safely cross here because drivers will stop for you they're just for show in Italy they don't work so as soon as you step on one of those people just keep going just keep going so you'll die so don't do that just run when there's no one there if you want to cross the road you stand there and you wait until no one is driving and then you run you run fast so that's the only way that I can suggest to get anywhere in Italy Mark was fishing he went fishing um, off our private beach and he caught a fish and it had spikes and it stabbed him in the hand and he thought he was a good day. But he went to the um the wee man, the wee man, wee lifeguard man, and says, I caught a fish and it stabbed me, will I die? And he went, No no, you live. You live. So he lived. He's still alive, so that's nice. Um I'm gonna show you this because it's changed colour a little bit. So it's not changed colour hunters. But it has darkened a little bit and you'll notice that in the crevices of the foam it has gotten a little bit darker. So all I'm doing as I talk to you is basically just going around in figures of eights and stirring it. That's all I'm doing. It's just gently stirring it. I don't want to do it too much because I don't want to get too much air into it because if you do get too much air into it, it can borderline be puff candy um, and we don't want puff candy. Again, if you don't know what puff candy is, I will put um, a description in the, the comments or the, the whatever to explain to you what puff candy is. Or I'll put a picture up just now explaining what puff candy is. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I'm doing. So let's go back to story time. I told you make a tablet, it was tedious. So what else happened? People where we were um, have never seen a tattooed lady in their life. Or at least I don't think so. Because I was walking around in 35 degree heat so I was walking around not showing off much more than this really like I had like a t-shirt on and then shorts so that went to the knee or below the knee not like short shorts so like knee down the way very modest um but um everywhere we went people were like breaking their neck to look at me like you're me I'm a person in Italy and I woke up to you and I'm like this and I'm right in your face as if you can't see me as if I'm not here and I'm looking you up and down and I'm like really really staring at you as if like are you a human what are you and then um, taking a wee sneaky photo perhaps even the police walked by me and they were like disgusted by me they were like mmm they're cool looking as if what, what is this what is this person and then one time I went into a shop and the man kept staring at me and eventually he went many pictures and I said yes yes and he said many many pictures yes what are you supposed to say about like what so I just said yes and smiled yes very much yes many pictures I I don't know if maybe like to them I was a bit like a like a sideshow freak like something about the circus like the incredible tattooed lady but I'm not even that tattooed compared to a lot of people that I know I'm looking at this now and it's bubbling quite a lot so I'm going to just take the spoon out and put the spoon above it I'll show you what I mean 
So the light outside has changed, i.e. the sun, so it has moved. So you'll see that it looks a lot darker now, but that's only because of the sun. So all I'm doing is putting the spoon here and not touching it. And the reason for that is that when the foam comes up, I would hope that the spoon would catch a lot of it to reduce it. Um, like if it's bubbling up, then it'll hit the spoon and break the, some of the bubbles. So I've got a chance to catch it if it overflows, but it's not going to overflow, it'll be fine. So what we're looking for is to get the consistency, like a thick consistency, and also a dark colour. Not too dark, because that would be burnt. But something that's going to basically um, taste nice. So like if you think of like a toffee um, being like a kind of darker brown, we're aiming for a toffee colour. So we're going to go back to story time while I look at my tablet. So the day before I get married, I um, I got a toothache. Not not the day before. The day before that, I got a toothache, and I woke up the day before my wedding in agony. And I was I was awake maybe from like three four in the morning, and I um, basically went to my dentist for seven o'clock in the morning and sat on the doorstep. And they arrived at half past seven and were like, "Can we help you?" And I said, "I fucking hope so." <laughs> but I'm getting married tomorrow. And I have mega toothache. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Suzanne, you should have went to the dentist beforehand and then got all that shit dealt with. Well, I did. I did. I went to the dentist and they were like, there's nothing wrong with your teeth, there's no cavities, everything's fine, everything's a okay, we'll give you a rescale and polish and on your way. And I was like, great. Um, I went to the dentist this time and they were like, yeah, you've been pushing, you've been clenching your teeth so hard through stress that you have pushed your tooth into your nerve um, so there's like a filling that I've got here somewhere and I've been pushing my teeth together so hard the filling and the tooth has pushed into my nerve and that's what's sore so they had to take my filling out um, put some other shit in there and put like a, a semi-permanent filling in and they were like this will be sore for like a week but it won't be toothache sore, it'll just be sore sore because of all the injections and all the fucking about we've done inside your mouth. Like, great, can't wait. So, I still have that by the way, I need to go get that taken out, like I need to get a new filling done in like three weeks when my dentist comes back to his holiday. So, there was that and my favourites were a donut, so you got like a donut bag that said like, I don't, I do not mind if I do and it says like her names on it um, and then his dad built a donut wall which I won't set a picture of here or here probably here and it was really cool so but we had to buy donuts so I had to phone our local um, bakers which is a Greg's and if you don't know what a Greg's is you don't live in the UK but Greg's Bakers is basically just a franchise bakery and I phoned them and um, they were aware of me I went in like Multiple times, like I'm going to buy 140 donuts for you. So is that cool? And they're like, yep. And I was like, can I pay for it now? And they're like, no, you can't. But you have to pay for it on the day. So I phone up. The day they tell me to phone up, and says, hi, it's me again. Just going to put more in for these donuts. And they're like, great. Hi, Suzanne. That's cool. So I did that. I put more in. And then um, half six in the morning of my wedding, they phone me and say, hi. Um, really sorry but your donuts didn't come no donuts for you no donuts for you and I was like cool my face is killing me I have toothache I'm getting married in a few hours and um, I've just woke up but yeah I'll, I'll go source all these donuts that's great so I phoned my dad in an absolute fucking panic and I was like dad you need to help me get these donuts um, I made the lady phone all the other Greggs in the land to get as many donuts as we could and my poor wee dad had to drive all the way in all these Greggs to get all these donuts and then take them to the hotel. Then I put his dad in a panic. His dad went to um, Asda, which is a big supermarket, Walmart, and got some donuts as well. So we actually had too much donuts, but that's better having none. So that was a pain in the hole. And then we went to the hotel and the guy who was running the, the hotel just didn't care. He probably told us that like we, we had we've got vegan food for the for the buffet. Because we had some vegans there, and I'm um, I'm a vegetarian site, so a lot of vegan food as well. Um, and he was like, "Yeah, you have vegan pakora, vegan 
um, sausage rolls, all that good shit. All that good shit. It's like cool. So I told all my vegans, this is what you're gonna have. So that's what you can eat. I'm like great, smashing. And then um, on the night, I went to get a sausage roll and I smelled it and I was like, that's definitely not, that's definitely meat. And the guy walked by me and I was like, are these not supposed to be vegan? And he went and walked away from me. And I was like, cool, no bother. And so he walked by me again at one point and I went, can you tell me what is vegan then? And he went, the pizza. I mean, the pizza wasn't vegan because it had cheese on it. Oh, wait, hold on. This colour has changed very quickly. Right. So, you can see now that it's changed a much darker colour. It's starting to become toffee-like. Um, I wonder if I put this on, if you see better, maybe not. So it's starting to caramelise, it's becoming quite toffee-like. Now at this stage, when it starts to do this, it'll turn very fast. It'll become very toffee-like very, very quickly. You need to be prepared to take it off the heat and beat it. And what I mean by that is you'll get your spoon and you'll vigorously, like, you'll vigorously beat back and forward to beat the shine off. It's sugary and it's very, very shiny and you need to beat the shine off of it to make it thick and that'll all be explained in a minute. Now, I am a woman. I am not strong. I go to the gym, but I am not strong. So to beat the shine off of it, I do have to employ a, a man. This man, of course, is your boy. Count Dankula, the absolute prick. So, he hates this, he hates this part. I always ask him to do it. He absolutely hates it. He knows it's coming. He doesn't think I'm actually gonna ask him. I definitely am. Um, so, you're gonna see him in a minute coming to help me. He's not gonna be happy about it. I would say it's probably still a bit too light. If you're not sure about colour wise and about how the best way to establish whether or not it is ready, there is another way. Basically get a glass and you fill the glass with water and you take a bit of the tablet and plonk it in. It's in there, it's not dissolving that quickly but it is dissolving so it probably could go just now. But as I say, it does turn quite quickly. It has turned, so I'm going to have to go ask Mark to come and help me just now. Marcus, can you come beat this? This is just me beating the shine off of it. Put your hand in that because you can't touch that. Right. And you need to beat it. Oh, my arm. I won't fall. Just usual. Just until it becomes tablet. Don't touch it. You knew this day was coming. Yeah, I knew, but it's fucking annoying. That's no beating, son. What am I meant to do? What am I doing? Doing what you're doing. Well, you said that's no beating. I will. For fuck's sake. Let me see him. So you're putting... Stop. It's meant bigger. I know, it's because you put a lot of air into it. So you've been whisking it and it's now, beca it's now becoming puff candy. Are you joking? No, so... Why is it getting bigger? It's getting bigger because you've been putting air in it. So you need to beat it like this, because you're putting air into it. Right. And you shouldn't be putting air into it, you just need to beat back and forward. I don't know. See this as well, see the sides? Right. This needs to come away. Right. So make sure you're getting... Have I fucked it? A wee bit. Alright. So, hold that for me. How can really you good. stir something wrong? Hold that. Right. So. See, because it's starting to puff up, mm -hmm. it's still starting to become tablet. So you just need to make sure. You mean you were doing that? That worked. See if you do that. I'm just trying to get it. Right. That's what I'm, that's how you beat it. You need to go back and forward. There we go. Look, it's tablet again. It's tablet again, aye. Yeah. You need, you need to scrape the stuff off the sides, though.
Have I fixed it? Yes. Actual? Yes. Oh dear. Fucking hell, man. You just touched it with the glove on. Aye. Even though I gave you the glove. <laughs> I forgot, fuck's sake. Like this? Yes. Beat it. Do you want me to actually do that now? Mm -hmm. And it's not going to do that no, again? No, it's not going to do that again. But now you're stirring it. What? That's what you fucking tell me to do. Look. That's what, what I was doing. What you're doing is stirring it and that's creating bubbles. What you need to do is go back and forward. Right, okay. Hold, give me the glove. No, I'll do it. <laughs> I didn't want you there, but seeing that you've told me I'm shite. Fucking yeah. Does this work? Yes. Need to scrape the sides. I know. Fuck. Well, if you know why I'm doing it. Fuck <laughs> off. My hands went all fucked. Your hands? Aye, because this fucking hurts doing this for ages. Right, remember that time I tell you to scrape beside you, didn't you? Do you remember that time? Right. It's made you fucking dumb. You're doing what I was doing! You tell me that was right! Shout my fucking ear. You're doing what I was doing. I'm going on oval, you were going in circles. That'll do. What difference does that make? So it looks matte now, doesn't it? It's no shiny, is what it was. Aye, it looks fine. Aye. Right. I need you to hold this handle. Okay. And we're going to lift it up. And we're going to put it in there. Right. Right. Man, wholesome YouTube's fucking gay. <laughs> is this wholesome though? Don't or is it aye, just... This is, this is gay normie tube shit. Do you think this is normie tube? Aye. Nobody is going to want to see this. Cooking. Specky. Bouncing. Fuck Tattooed off. freak. Make the most difficult fucking pointless sweet ever. Tablet's amazing. Tablet is amazing. Can I do that? Because you'll make me ill because I think it's shite. It's because I'm doing it with my wrong hand. Yeah, give me it. Give me it. It's my left hand. Right, hold, you still need to hold the fucking I'm trying. Up. I've got weak wrists. Right, so all I've done is I went at the back of a, tea, a, a tablespoon so I can spread that. Move! Ah, uh, I bumped my hand. You bumped yourself, son. <laughs> right. Aye, so I wet the back of that so I could spread it and I'm saying that out loud, I know you don't care but they care, mate, they make care. Right, you want some of this? Put it in a spoon, you can no, take it away. No, I'll my hand. Right, hold on. Right, take the spoon away. Cheers. <laughs> See you later. Bye. So I, that's it. It's in a Pyrex dish, which will not smash with heat. It's in there. I get the back of a spoon, I wet the back of the spoon so I can smooth it out so it's all flat. You need to leave that to set now for a long ass time. No, maybe like an hour or two. After like half an hour, cut it into squares because if you don't cut it into squares then you will never cut it into squares because it will become a solid mass. This camera's about to die, but basically traditionally I would scrape it all off and put it on a spoon. Like that and then we would just eat it off the spoon. That's what my mum did, so that's what I do. Anyway, thanks very much for coming to watch me make tablet. I was making it anyway. I thought I'd show you guys if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up or subscribe and any of that kind of stuff. Um, links are below to my Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that kind of stuff if you're nosy, if you want to see it. Um, if you want to see more videos of me making stuff, let me know and I'll do that. Um, but yeah, thanks. If you try tablet, if you try making it based on this video, which I doubt highly, but if you do, send me pictures and let me know if you liked it. Um, I've tried a bit of this since quick as I really like it. Yeah. Okay, right, thanks again for coming and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, so not very good at this whole filming thing as you can probably tell. The end in that video was very 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 brief and short. What I need to clarify on is what you do because it all happened so fast. So once he's beat the shine off of it and it's became sort of like a matte 
brown colour and there's, you're starting to scrape it along and you can see it's parting um, it means you can basically put it in a dish they tell you that you should basically have to grease dishes if I was you I would get like a dish and as long as it's heat proof and it won't smash just line it with grease proof paper I use a glass dish because it's basically all sugar and fat it comes straight out of a glass dish so I don't need to put any sort of lining on it um, as I said once it's in the dish after about half an hour cut it into cubes because if you don't you'll never get it cut so this is mine that's now been about an hour later I've cut it into cubes Marcus has it a, a bit but it's been cut into cubes and um, it's still quite warm to touch um, and you, you can take the cubes out and it's I don't know if you can tell from that tapping but it's quite hard and that's exactly how it should be um, one of the tiers of my Patreon is that if you um, subscribe for $10 every month that you get your name called out at the end of um, a video we have, apologies, my memory is terrible I'm not going to remember all of this, I have my phone in front of me okay so the Patreons that I'd like to thank for obviously being a patron is um, Bikayu who is at the wedding and she's cool as fuck. She's such a nice lassie. Um, so she has become a patron as Kevin Collins, Hannah, Vicky Z, or Vicky Z, um, Simon Taylor, and Chloe Watermelon. Poor neglected Chloe Watermelon. She waited so long for me to get the message to her as well. So really, really thank you for that, for your patience of waiting for me. Um, so thank you to all of those people for being a patron of mine. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're supposed to say. I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I, um, at the speed of light earlier on I said to go down to the bit where all my things are linked. If you do want to do that, that's great. Like, uh, Patreon, but I've also got like Twitter and um, like Instagram and stuff. Um, there's photos of the wedding on Instagram if you're interested in that. Um, I don't know, whatever man, thanks for coming and, and watching me make tablet for 10 years. Bye!